talk about content, right? Talk about content. And these next three speakers that we're going to have up here are going to talk just about that, content marketing. And we get three different perspectives from three different parts of the country. We got the West Coast with Jason Frazier and the agent marketer. The East Coast with Zoe Horneck and Coldwell Banker. And we have Middle America with Stacey Staub, Stacey Staub with Weston, Maine. Without further ado, please welcome our next speakers. Hey guys. Hi, Middle. Hey, it's so funny. I, I hate being on stage. So. Just knocked over your water. I love these Fine. chairs. These are pretty cool. How are you guys today? Fantastic. Good. good, good. So content marketing. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like content marketing we use as a buzzword more often than we use as an actual uh, verb, you know? Um, so it's a nut that we have to crack, and I think that it's one of the, the, the biggest things that we need to start getting creative about. Because when you think about content marketing, one of the goals is, is you know, I wish that I could get people to open my email and actually spend longer than, you know, the delete button than actually, than you can actually read it. Um, I wish when I send somebody an email, um, you know, anything through my digital experience that it's, that it's going to be different. Um, so kind of, you know, really what I wanted to talk about is um, we broke this down both in the digital sense, in the traditional marketing sense, and then both in the relational marketing sense because I think one of the first strategies with content is to really figure out who you're, who you're talking to. Is that right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Jason, talk to me. I, I want to get, we have plenty of time on this panel, and I, I really feel like it's important for us to get to know the, the nuances about you and your business and, and where you're at um, with what you're doing. So just kind of take a minute just to talk a little bit about your background and, and where you're from and what you're up to. Uh, so uh, I'm just happy to be here. It's a great, uh, great experience We're for happy me. Happy to have. Uh, you. But my name is Jason Frazier. I'm uh, the founder of the Agent Marketer. Uh, I, it's a coaching and training platform for agents, title, uh, mortgage did professionals. Do? Did you do something before that? Yeah. So uh, my my background is in venture capital and technology startups. I used to okay. work for Peter Thiel, who's the founder of PayPal. Uh, I, I joined the. I grew up in the mortgage and real estate industry. Uh, I, used, I was a kid running around uh, a mortgage office, and, and I had aunts and, uh, that were uh, real estate agents. And um, so I, I love the industry. I have a great passion for it. And uh, I got a chance in 2009 to join the family business. So I've been doing that for the last 10 years, but I decided to go out on my own. And uh, I'm just, you know, just, I, I just really have a passion for what agents do. You're a helper. And yeah. I, I help, I, I solve problems and I help people. That's, I love that's it. Basically I, what that's I do. where I come from too. Stacy, let's talk a little bit about you and your brand and where you're from and how long, how long, this is still a relatively new brand for you. It is. So um, those of you who know me and have been coming to this conference for a long time, like I have, um, I had a brokerage that I worked at for about 10 years and was the marketing director there. Um, but I always thought that I would own a brokerage and it was never my dream to work for someone else. So um, about a year and a half ago, I took the leap and started West in Maine. So Good job. Thank Good job. Congratulations. Thank you. And Zoe. Sure. So um, I'm with Coldwell Banker. I'm the VP of Product Marketing and Communications, and I'm a bit of a newbie. I started in September, um, so Admin in New York was my first in Min. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not a stranger to real estate, so I started my career in software development, um, and Coldwell Banker was actually my client at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I moved on to one of the top uh, agencies in New York City, and I worked there for a while wow. on different clients and really focused on digital transformations Good. Um, and also for manufacturing technology company. And so really, um, when I was uh, in the agency world, I went out on maternity leave and I got my real estate license <laughs> and, and nice. uh, during that time. And, um, and really fell in love with it. Yeah. So I grew up in Manhattan, so, you know, amazing apartments and, and brownstones everywhere. So Lots it's of really, inspiration. Oh, yes, tons yes. of inspiration. So, love it. Um, yeah, so I, I run all of our, our products and platforms at the brand level and um, how we communicate to our 92,000 agents. I love it. And I think communication is totally key. 
Um, so I'm going to start with you, Jason, because I know that you kind of have this, this broad back, background both in the technology side as, as well as the agent marketing side. But we were talking earlier about that relational piece. And to me, relational marketing means that, and I'm talking to you guys back here too, so don't fall asleep, um, <laughs> that we, you know, relational marketing is, is really about um, bringing that long-term client into yeah. your sphere so yeah. that we're finding ways to nurture them. So from a content perspective, the goal is how am I going to not only acquire a new customer, but how am I going to create a, life, a lifelong yeah. um, relationship with them in a way that um, you know, serves me in repeated business? How do you start to begin to create a strategy content-wise yeah. around building those relationships and acquiring them? So like you said, relationship marketing is all about long-term engagement with the consumer, right? And that is based on the premise that you are delivering on their specific interests and their needs. And so one thing that I like to do, uh, not only just in my own business, but uh, you know, you know, teach and, and instruct people how to do, is about creating avatars and personas, or however, whatever term you want to uh, use, to really understand the consumer that you're marketing to, because the message has to be on point. Right now, we're, we're going through a, a crazy convergence of, of culture, technology, marketing, True. social media. We're getting marketed to New all the time. New generations coming in. Yeah. Absolutely, and so it's very, it's very noisy, it's loud. You're getting marketed to everywhere. So if you can personalize that, you're gonna increase your conversions. You're gonna get those emails open because when you're creating an avatar persona of a consumer, you're looking for commonalities, things that you have um, if from an agent's perspective. If they, they have to go hiking, they have to go fishing, whatever. And if that email uh, subject has to do with something that you know they like, then the chances of them opening it are you know, 10 times more than if you just blasted out the same you know, white noise email subject that you're doing for, for everybody else. So with me is that you know, obviously the, 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 the most important asset that an agent has is their database, their clients. They've been doing this business for right. years, right? So when they have that, they have, with all these new tools that are coming on where they could grab social feeds and scrape the internet and see what these people like, use that data. A lot of it you can do for free. You could do it on Google and, and, and just do it for free. And then in your CRM, which should be your lifeblood, have those notes so that you know when I could, I could deliver this message to this person based off of this interest and that interest. And that's really how your strategy needs to start is to really create basically your, your perfect client and then start looking at that and, and trying to find ways of commonality to make sure that you're staying like what David talks about, the mind share. You want, when they think about real estate or their, their neighbor, their cousin, their daughter, whoever mentions real estate, you want to be the one that they think about. Right. Um, did you have anything you wanted to add to the relationship side of it? I mean, I think that's at the heart of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I interview new agents, um, I often try to describe our marketing program as a community and content-based marketing program, but it is all about relationships. Uh, we do have a website that's an awesome lead generator, but the bulk of our business comes from past relationships and current relationships, so serving you, those folks. How many of you have about you know 50% or more of your business come from past clients or referral or repeat business? Yeah. Right? So when you think about the cost um, of keeping a new customer um, over acquiring a new one, and I mean, it's, it's fairly well known in marketing that you, know, you really benefit so much from being able to keep on, on the new clients. But it, when it comes to content marketing itself, and I hear, oh, we, you know, we've got to create these personas and we've got to put this together, I think the biggest challenge is, is you have a variety of ways to touch your clients when it comes to marketing, both from a digital sense and both from the analog sense and just regular door knocking and postcards and whatever it is that you've built into your system of, of, of marketing. Um, but how are you discovering what content is really resonating with the people that you really want to reach? Like, how do you decide? Um, yes, we can talk about what their needs are, but I think moving beyond that is when it comes to real estate, how am I going to tie hiking in with real estate? How, how can I bring this you know, connection in so that um, I'm not wasting their time giving yeah. them meaningless and you know stuff about your your hiking, which is great for them, but it doesn't have much to do with my business, and I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. So I mean, I think having a good yeah. marketing mix is super important because 
once you have this data, right, like you know these people, you know what their interests are, and um, it's not that difficult. Like a quick Facebook, you know, stalking um, <laughs> will take you a long way into some insight into what you're looking at. Right. And then like on our web website in particular, we can see exactly where they came in. So if they came in on a blog post that was our 10 favorite hikes, you know, near Denver, um, then we really have that instant connection when we reach out to people and the follow-up, right? So if we have enough people that came in through that blog post, we're gonna organize a hike and we're gonna invite all our people to come see, join us. See, I love that. Okay, did everyone just hear that? <laughs> So if you are having people, if, if the content is resonating from something that you've done digitally, yeah. turn that into an analog customer experience. Yeah. So write that. I hope everybody wrote that down because <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Because you're, you really are. You're taking an experience that you're finding is a commonality, mm -hmm. but you're, you're taking it one step further and you're saying, hey, I'm here and I, I love what you're up to and I love what you're doing, so I'm going to invite you into my world because we love a little bit of that too. And then you're not advertising. Um, real estate, you're, you're really coming in as, as a, um, you know, a fellow community member. Well, and I right? think like as a broker, like how are you doing that for your agents then? Um, if you're an individual agent, it's a really like awesome idea to throw a client appreciation event around this information that you have about your people. And your people probably have common interests with you anyway. So if you like to go to art openings, you know, turn your, uh, office into an art gallery and bring a different artist in every month and throw a first Friday event and invite all your people. It's so easy. Yeah. Um, but it's that intent of like serving, honestly, and I like to tell my agents like, door knocking is like trying to push your way into their door, like let's try to pull them into our door and like give them an experience that they're going to enjoy and appreciate and then we are that mind share, yeah. right? I, I, I think that's that. so yeah. important too because you're showing what you're interested in too. It's not just a one way. Yes. Um, and so, and not only are you showing that, but it's also really good to know where they are in the sales funnel. Obviously, we're not always trying to close, yeah. but that really helps with the conversation and the segmentation when you are reaching out to them. When you organize your database in general, you should have lots of different filters so you know not only what they're interested in, hey, when was the last time that they actually bought or sold a home, you really need to think about how you're organizing that because that's the key. Right, and if they're coming to your events or your different parties or different things that you're doing in the community, then you know this is someone that's paying attention to what we're doing. Right. Well, and like be genuine about it. Like yes. if you hate hiking, don't <laughs> yeah. organize a hike yeah. and like right. want right. to die halfway through. And say I'm going to wait at the top yeah. <laughs> yeah. or the bottom. <laughs> like we have an office that's down the street from Coors Field, which is our baseball stadium. And so we threw a big, huge opening day event. And I like to be that person that throws a party so that my agents don't have to throw a party, but they get to invite all their people. Um, for those of you who don't live in Denver, it snowed <laughs> on opening day, and we still had 300 people show up. Oh. Um, they wore snow pants, and it was a super fun time, but that was our way of, like, we try to do that so regularly so that you are, always have something to talk about besides real estate so that you can then talk about real estate. Yeah. <laughs> Love, have it. The, have Love, the opportunity. It. Yeah. Love it. Love um, it. Zoe, talk to me a little bit about how, we, we, we talked about how to sort of bring things from the digital content world mm -hmm. back, back into digital. But one of the things I'm curious about, especially on the, on the, the national level when you're dealing with 92,000 agents is how, how are we measuring the different um, local interests? Like what are, you, what are your tools? Are there certain tools that you're using to measure what's resonating outside of just traffic? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so from a brand perspective, we provide so many different tools that allows um, our network to, to localize and, and to have that personalization. And so, you know, from a different campaigns that we put out there, every market's different. We know that. And so we want to make sure that we're providing a good basis and they're the experts in their market. So they want to, we want them to take that and, and really make it their own. Right. Um, but, you know, for instance, even uh, we just launched a, a great new product called CBX Seller Leads, um, and it's proprietary algorithms that are predicting 
where the sellers are coming from. And so not only are we providing these leads to our network, but we're giving them context so that they know a little bit something about them. Are they empty nesters? And right. that way, from that first touch point, they can, they can have some sort of personalization in whether it's a door knock or you know, direct mail, but they can say, hey, you know, are you, are you thinking about moving? You know, let me give you some contact information. Or, hey, you know, welcome, you know, did you check out this new area? Um, we're doing a lot of hiking there, and it's a great <laughs> place to go for empty nesters or whatever that may be. Right. So really providing that context so that the network can then do their thing and be those amazing agents that they are. I love that. And I, lo I love the idea, too, of just creating that content that can be shared among among the people, right? Yeah. So you should be thinking about, is this, sh is this shareable content? Is this something that somebody else would like to know? And you can ask, instead of asking for a referral <laughs> or repeat business or introductions, you know, you can say, if, the, if you think this is, would be a fun event for someone that you know and love, you know, feel free to forward that. So this, th when you're doing things that are very intentional, as we talked about earlier, then you can find those other areas to design um, other little conversation entry points into into kind of what what you're building into your overall strategy. Um, here's a question that I have um, because I know that there's a there are there there are consumers that are more analytical, right? So I think for me, I love all the pretty content and I love the <laughs> inspirational content, and I'm a, a Pinterest user. Um, but there are definitely people that are. Um, you know, more analytical that want a little bit more of the market analysis. Mm -hmm. They want to know, you know, square footage and, you know, price per square footage and things like that. Um, how, how does design come into, you know, even taking marketing, con I mean, marketing content around the data and actually being a little bit more data driven with that. And maybe you can speak to, you know, as you're helping agents stay away from, do the nice pretty content, but yeah. also you've got the really, the, the really good valuable numbers because there yeah. are numbers driven people. Yeah, and, and it's important, uh, like Stacy said, as regards to having a good mix, it's the same thing with imagery, right? And yeah. I'm a pretty analytical guy. I still like the pretty stuff too, right? But mm -hmm. it's about that thumb stopping. It's good to know. It's See, not, I'm going to put that yeah, in my notes. So, yeah. I like the pretty I stuff too. I like pretty too. stuff. Uh, so you have that thumb stopping content. But for what you can do is you mix maybe some inspirational quotes, whatever. But then you have like info, infographs to me, I, I love infographs. Right. And that is the combination of numbers, data, statistics, and then in a nice package, you know, I, you know, icons, funny, humor. To me, I'm telling you what a lot of people don't do. Like every, you know, I'm sure everyone here, the lighter side of real estate, right? I see everyone share that stuff. It's hilarious. With memes, yeah, yeah a lot exactly. Of memes, like, yeah. Not, a, not enough people do that. Humor really is a big attractor. And so throw some of that stuff in there, especially if you know that it's statistics and it's like, oh, I, you know, the house is on fire, but it's a really great neighborhood and, you know, all this other stuff. But can I be, can I play devil's advocate on that sure. though? <laughs> Because I have a problem with too many memes. I think we we I think it's very easy to be lazy when it comes to choosing. Yep. Humor's great. Yeah. You know, providing the good ways to do that. And I think um, you know, if you go to Twitter, you can find tons of brands yep. that are interacting with consumers in like really imaginative ways. Yep. I do think in real estate in particular though, when it comes to creating quality over quantity, we can kind of um, sort of fall on those memes. I think they're great if maybe you're using them, you know, as a sprinkle to what your brand is, but I think sometimes you can dilute um, the really high quality stuff that you kind of want to catch them with. Um, I could be wrong in that. That could just be my preference. <laughs> well, but, you it's know. all moderation, right? I'm not saying like, yeah. memes only. I'm just saying mix that into it because some, it, with whatever, when it comes down to it, they're very popular, right? Yes, and so, they do drive engagement. So what I like to look at is that you could hear all the statistics, you could hear all the stats, and, and everyone needs to understand, needs to question, and the audience needs to question what everyone says, whether it's an influencer, expert, guru, whoever, you need to question it because it's all brought out to explain or back up someone's narrative, right? So right. I take that, I look at it, I say, okay, that makes sense that this person's only doing X amount and this is the stats. But then I look at my, my circle, my sphere, and I see what people are doing. Are they downloading stuff? Are they watching? Are they, are they on demand? And so then I take my personal experience and saying, okay, well, that kind of doesn't meet what those statistics are. And then everyone's market's different, everyone's audience is different. So you just gotta kind of see what fits. But I'm always into when there's a tension somewhere, you wanna give that experience so then when they're like, I'm shopping, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and then they get to you and it's all, okay, market update, you know, maybe not an infographic, well, so something maybe, like that. Maybe yeah. this is like a really good conversation because I think that there's different, 
Um, there's different levels of marketing based on the level of where you're at in your relationship with your database, right? Well, so you're going to have your closer sphere that's going to understand your humor over a brand new person that you're just well, trying I, to acquire. I mean, I think it's so super important whether you are a brand new agent or you've been in the business 20 years to know who your people are yeah. and to know who to t how to talk to them and then to be consistent in that voice. So, like, for us having the opportunity to start a brand from scratch, we spent some time talking Figuring about exactly the agents that we wanted to attract and then who are their clients and what's going to attract those clients for them. And we've had to be, and I think we've done a good job at being really consistent. We're not trying to serve everyone. Like, I don't hire a lot of, you know, bros, <laughs> um, because I, I have a lot of men that are my agents, but um, those aren't the, the guys um, that have been working at EXP, you know, maybe, or a very straightforward brokerage and who really like to knock on doors and do that stuff, they, they look at our marketing stuff and they don't get it. Like, right. they're like, yeah, it's nice, but it, it's like, pretty. if you don't pet it and like want to <laughs> lick it, like you're probably not going to work at West Main because that's our jam, <laughs> right? And so like, people love what we put out and right. those are our people and that's okay. Yeah. Like we, there's enough houses there's enough business for everyone. Well, and so that, that also leads me to the, the relationship part, which is not only do you, and, we, and I had a conversation with David Marine, at the CMO, which is, you know, who are you speaking to? Are you speaking to your agents that you're trying to attract and recruit, mm -hmm. or are you speaking to your consumers? So along with your lines of deciding what your personas are, yeah. um, you know, there's, there's all different kinds of people. You've got to know your audience. You've got to know yeah. your audiences. So, well, and if you're at a brand that you don't want to lick, you know, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I'm so sorry. Um, but really, like, if it's not resonating with you and you're not excited to show it to people, that's not serving you. What are you paying for? Um, right. There's a lot of different brokerages out there. There's a ton of... Um, I like to say, I don't know where I came up with this either, I'm so sorry, um, but there's an ass for every seat and there's a seat for every ass. And if your ass is in the wrong seat, move. Um, because it's holding, back, holding you back in your business, I guarantee it, if your brand isn't, like, if you feel like your brand doesn't represent you. Yeah. Right. And your clients feel that too. I'd right. also like to just note, you know, going back to the memes, and you can see what's working because we have metrics, especially yep. yeah. when you're doing things in the digital world. So, you know, you should, whether you're a broker and you need to educate your agents, you know, let them know what tools are out there for you so you can measure the success of your different campaigns or your memes or your email open rates. And, and that really tells you a lot about your customer base. Yeah, I love that. Um, it, it, and, and metrics are really hard to actually execute. And I feel like the more volume and the more complicated marketing becomes, the more we have to really think through, like you were mentioning earlier about how when you first started the brand, um, you, and, and I've done this too recently where you know, you're, you're kind of in that startup mode, you're, you're thinking about what is my voice? How is my voice different than my competitor? Am I going to be funny? Am I, it is our, our personal brand, whether it's your company or whether you're a, a, an agent with a personal brand, um, you know, what is my personality going to be? So it's not just who your people are, but it's who you want to be to your people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, um, and if you're, so if your people are on Instagram, right? Like those are, my people are on Instagram. My people are also on Pinterest. And um, so are our agents and so are their clients. And so our Instagram, we work really, really hard on. Like it's my baby. I will never outsource it. Um, I will outsource Google Analytics <laughs> and like, Facebook ad testing, like <laughs> that's not for me, but it's really important. Like yes, yeah. I would love to hire Zoe. She's like got a good gig um, already, yeah. but and we're gonna um, have her speak to that stuff too. Yeah, so like figuring out like, do you need to outsource the creative? If you do, make sure that they're speaking in a consistent voice for your brand. Yeah. So I think it's a really hard thing to wear all the hats, whether you're an individual agent or a broker owner, um, to do all of these things well yourself. Right. Yeah. Definitely. What What content is working like right now out in the marketplace? And I know a lot of this is driven by hyperlocal, mm. um, um, you know, uh, statistics and things like that. But what is working for you like right now? Um, so. A lot of local events, like 
we, have, we put lots of lists on our blog. Um, we push that content out. We curate a lot of that information because people in Denver specifically um, were full of hipsters and millennials mostly. Um, they like to get together and they like to know what's going on. So we try to be that source. Um, if we're not throwing the party, we'll tell you where the party's at. Um, so that has been a good uh, kind of traffic driver for us. Um, and everything that we put out, we kind of gauge like who, what are we actually doing? Like, sometimes it's hard to pump out so much blog content and then push that to Facebook and push that to Instagram. And so um, sometimes I have to pull back and go like, oh, this is actually not interesting or valuable. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to get yeah. it done. Right. And that's when you yeah. pull it. You have to focus your strategy. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I think you've probably heard everyone on this stage talk about, you know, you can't be everywhere, you can't yeah. use everything. Mm -hmm. So once you figure out what your strategy is, then it actually is easier to look at the Google, Google Analytics for that specific yeah. medium or whatever channel you are using. And you don't have to know about everything because you are focused. Right. Um, how many, how, in me, you guys can all answer this maybe, I, you were mentioning Pinterest, um, I really love to follow people outside of real estate to find out how they're really leveraging, um, especially the like home designers and stylists and, and architecture and things like that. And it usually starts by me being, you know, discovering something on Instagram and then following them into their strategy on Pinterest and other areas. But one of the things that really intrigues me is that, you know, and I'll just tell, tell you a quick story. I have a best friend of mine that um, was a fabulous interior decorator. She, she wasn't trained at it, but she just had this natural flair. She decided to, because um, her friends all said, you should do this. And she got into her own blogging. She would put things up on Pinterest. And really, she started with her iPhone <laughs> taking pictures of how she styled an end table, right? And or how she styled a bookshelf or whatever she did. And the next thing you know, two years later, She's 250,000 followers into Instagram. She gets affiliate money from Pottery Barn, Nordstrom's, Home Goods, like every possible thing you can imagine. She talks in a way with the relationships. She doesn't not answer a comment, doesn't not answer a message that comes into her Instagram stories, does not, uh, she has this full on digital relationship with every, with thousands of people, and she does still, she doesn't outsource any of it, um, but one of the things that inspires me about that is that I wonder why we don't do more of that, because there's, an, there's a strategy to it that is really inspiring, so get beyond the pretty still, but she has, she gets together with other um, designers, and they do the spring home tour, and they do the summer home tour, and they do the decorating for the holidays. But I could imagine that if she tomorrow became a real estate agent, she would have the most amazing mm -hmm. database of people and fans and followers simply because she's being authentic with this content that really drives her and it would be ancillary to anything real estate, but anytime she came out with a new way to, um, you know, something else to put in her fall decorating in her kitchen, this is something that's gonna be driving a huge amount of people. Yeah, I mean, it, it pays to be passionate about what yeah. you do, right? Yeah. I, I love what I do. This is a dream job for me, and I'm, I'm assuming it's the same for you guys. So it's really easy also to talk about it and, right. and, and post on, on and, Instagram. And so I guess that's maybe my point, which is is that you know your passions can also be your inspiration oh, yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. Um, so don't be afraid, like I mentioned earlier, is like don't be afraid to really dig into what's important to you. And if you were to apply, you know, get it outside of the real estate brain, but if if you were to apply it in a way that, let's say like your, your pa Stephanie, I see you sitting right here in front. I know that you love to make jewelry or, you know, other things. And it's like if you apply that passion and you, you put a strategy to that um, to get it sold or to reach out to people that are other jewelry makers, we can get inspired by those kinds of strategies to bring into, into real estate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's, it's, it's important that you brought that up because I don't see enough um, agents follow other brands and other people and get ideas from them, right? It just right, we're getting ideas from each, e exactly. each other, Exactly, just because right? it's a different market doesn't mean that that same type of strategy won't work for you, right? You could always follow other real estate agents, but eventually everyone's doing what everyone else is doing. You can't stand out by being the same as everyone else. So 
at least go out and get some inspiration, get some ideas on doing that. And then another uh, thing that I would mention is uh, as far as like what you would outsource is you can't outsource your passion and you can't right. outsource your voice, right? You could have someone help you write the content and craft it, but it's gotta be you. And, uh, and too many times I see people just wanting, I wanna outsource my marketing. And it's like, well, to me, I truly believe that marketing, marketing is gonna drive you. your business yeah. now with everything that's going on in our culture that marketing is gonna be the number one way you're gonna drive your business. And if you outsource that away from your passion and your voice, it, it's gonna to be tough to, to become authentic to your people. Right, and I think that's what we worry about more with automation and machine learning yep. is how much of it is gonna be coming out of our hands. Yep. Um, but I, I, and I think that like Molly and I agree, and I, I think a lot of people do, that this is really a good opportunity to re, sort of re, revisit things that inspire you. And I don't know, how many of you remember the refrigerator photo from that first slide deck when we, we came out? Okay, so that's my Pinterest friend, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she decided, first it was just nice decorating stuff, right? And it was like the lifestyle. Then she decided to get into organization, so she spun it off, and now she's creating, you know, I'm gonna style my refrigerator, for goodness sake. <laughs> and she has, she has tripled her traffic because now she's gone from just talking about this particular topic, and now she's talking about something else. Yeah. I don't well, and you know, right. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, any agents out there, I would talk to her and, and hook up with your friend because yes. she's got a okay, great so network. Okay, so here's, <laughs> if, you're, if you're writing down any notes, her name is Christy Wicks, and it's christywicks.com, and she spells Christy, K-R-I-S-T-Y.com. And, um, but go on to her Pinterest, fall, go on to her Instagram account, which is off the yeah. hook. I mean, and in general, partner, right? You, you may not partner. be that That's expert interior do. designer, but you can partner with somebody and really build your business. I mean, it's all about our spheres, right? That's how anybody really gets a different job or finds new clients. So, I mean, use that. And that, I think that's a great example of just somebody out there in the network that you can right. be tapping well, into. And you know what the next question, like people are thinking like, when do I have time to do all this? Right. Do I have time? Right. I'm too busy yeah. selling Absolutely. houses, right? Absolutely. You guys are creating content all the time, or you could be, um, just your daily life. And we keep hearing about this. I mean, Gary Vee obviously is the prime example of this, but um, if you are more consistent about it though, and not like super random, people want to start following that. Um, I have an agent who cooks dinner with her husband every night, and they cook like these fabulous dinners, and she started posting it on her Insta story every night. And now she has like, she just started doing it like maybe six weeks ago, she has 120 live views on average of them what them cooking, cooking dinner. dinner and when she doesn't post it people start like texting Wondering. instant messaging her and asking if something's wrong right and she's like we went out to eat thanks <laughs> but now she can start to tie in real estate right so she can start mentioning like a really nice kitchen if she's touring a home like right this would be great for us to cook dinner in like da -da -da -da. you know like there's these ways of like um taking your life and turning it into content just the way you do with your interests and everything else. And this is like, it's so easy now. It's yeah. so easy. Like, remember when we used to have to like carry a digital camera with us and then we would have to go and upload those photos onto our computer. And then we would have to upload those into our blog. And it was like such a pain in the ass. And it took so long. Like now, you could be sitting here right now and I bet Kenny Fast is if he's sitting here. I bet he's creating content <laughs> like as we speak. Like if you don't follow him, you should, and you should also subscribe to his newsletter. It's my crush. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> I aspire to that newsletter. Um, so, but like honestly, he's so good at that. So if you're not following him, but and you can see, like you can be standing with him and not even noticing that he, not a, even notice that he's doing it. And then I'm like, wait, I was standing right by him, and now I'm watching it on his Insta story. Like, how did that happen? And I'm trying to get more smooth about it, like that. Yeah. Instead of being the person that's like, hold on, you guys, wait. <laughs> Where's my Instagram app? But right. if you do it more often, then that like will it's speak like a to muscle, your people. right? Yeah. You, you're then you're starting to create that content on the fly, mm -hmm. which is what I loved about the 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 other one with the um with the gal that was jumping in the pool with the sold sign. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are moments in your life when you can you know really be authentic and show the moment, um, and you're gonna and you're gonna earn a fan. 
-hmm. in that moment. You're gonna earn, earn someone. I, I was even just looking for someone in Sacramento the other day and I found another agent who um, is also an artist, a painter. Um, and he goes and he teaches painting to children who are, are learning to do things. So this was another passion of his that he decided to bring into that. Um, so, I mean, there's millions of ways of doing content, but I think part of the overarching strategy around that is having a strategy. Yeah. Yep. Right? It, I mean, start with a content calendar. I, yeah. I admit we were chatting backstage. I didn't hear Katie's whole talk. But if she didn't mention her content calendar, she should have yep. um, because it's such a good place to start and just yes. start being consistent. And that's first. Yes. Like we put out an e-newsletter every single Friday morning. Every Friday morning I get up at 4 a.m. and I pound that thing out as painful as it might be and send it to my agents so that they can send it out because we get a way better open rate when we're consistent. Like right. if you're not signed up for Katie's newsletter, she sends it out every Saturday morning. Yeah. And same thing, if I don't get it, I'm gonna message her and be like, Katie, are you okay? <laughs> right. You know, because right. really, like it, right. she's been that consistent about it. But that's what creates that audience. And then, you know what that also like, transmits is that you're dependable and reliable and know what you're doing and you, you don't run around with your hair on fire. Um, like agents that are constantly posting like six closings today, four inspections tomorrow, yeah. don't know how I'm gonna get it all done. Like, are you gonna want you're them to be your frazzled. agent? Yeah, yeah. yeah right. that, like no. And then they're gonna go, I know you're so busy, I don't wanna ask you. Like, Right. Oh, okay, I really could have sold your house. Right, that and this sucks. goes into that intention and that meaning behind mm -hmm. every single thing that you decide to put out should have a meaning behind it. It should be very intentional. If you're not sure of what your intention is by the content that you're putting out, then don't put it out. It's so much better to have something that has clarity and you know, digitally that can be that can be tough, but consistency yeah. and means I mean, it, and clarity is interchangeable. Yeah. I so think. I, I would say one thing: it's okay to fail as yes. long as you fail fast and you fail forward, mm -hmm. right? So um, you know, you can take those risks and try something and look at the metrics, see if it works, see if yes. it doesn't work, and then move on and pivot if you need to do that. So I think that's a really important point: that don't be afraid to try something new. Yeah. I love that. I and love that. One thing that sorry, uh, one thing that Katie Lance always says is that this is a it's a marathon not a sprint yeah so you're going for it your takes time term. if you don't get you know 200 likes on your first instagram post then that's okay right, you, right. it's going to take time to grow a following grow reach where people are, people are, are ready for your your content and you got to test you got to test the content that you're putting out and and make sure what's working what's not and then just just move to that to that area and it's and it's okay to fail yeah. it's not old, it's not going to happen overnight it's going to take time yeah and it's not just about likes right we i think we probably all know that now, but like de define what your s success looks like. Right. So yeah. maybe it's just that people are talking about your post when you're at the next party that you're yep. throwing right. something out. So it may not just be around the digital metrics, but you know, really think about, and that's, you know, sit down for a day, come up with your strategy. It's really, I know it's scary sometimes to do that and, and, to, and to put the time to, to do that, but it really is worth it. And one of the other things that I've noticed too, and maybe you guys can speak to this is, and certainly with my friend Christy, um, is that they reciprocate with other um, designers and decorators with yeah. each other. Like they've, they've actually built their own community. And I've noticed this with a lot of Southern California agents um, that when they're showing some of the, the larger listings, the luxury listings, all of the luxury agents and brands um, you know, really repost and they reshare and they take some of that, that shared content together. Um, and to me, that really shows that you're a brand that's open to not just the knowledge of what's going on, not just in your brokerage or um, in your world, but that you're paying attention to what's going on around you. And when you talk about positioning and messaging, what you're projecting is that um, you're also paying attention to what another agent is doing in the market to maybe bring value. Because I think the consumer can see right through um, the stuff that is just advertising um, because we have to find new ways of, of weaving in these moments where we can connect with them so that they recognize you the next time you come in in these little odd places. And I think one of the things that I've learned is, is really seeing where you can share um, other people's content that's even in your area. And it may be about real estate or it may be about something else, but like you were mentioning partners earlier, 
you know, don't be afraid to reshare the stuff that's going on in your community. Don't yeah. be afraid to um, make their content part of your content if you need ins uh, yeah. more inspiration. Yeah. Just make Referrals. sure you're in compliance when you're sharing <laughs> lists. Compliance, yeah. 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 Make sure you get permission. You know, don't you know steal a lot of images and things like that. And always give credit, um, especially for photographers. Um, make sure that they're always getting everything that they need to have attribution. Well, and. Like, how can you be of service to those clients who um, might not be your clients for life? Um, especially for us, a lot of people are moving out of Denver right now because it's become so expensive. They have a ton of equity in their homes and they're cashing out and they're leaving, actually. And those are my favorite clients right now because um, I don't have to find them a new place to live. I just get to sell their house. Um, so we created a campaign called Moving Out of Denver, and I feature listings for, in other markets. And that has become such a cool program, and I have you know, agents lined up like, hey, will you feature this listing next week? Because my seller's going to be so happy about that, and maybe we'll find a buyer you know, that's moving from Denver. See, that's exactly mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, is that that, that open, shared, and but you've, the, the extra step that you take, though, Stacey, is that that you've given it a theme, you've given it a name, you've been really intentional about how do I want this to be projected out there both in name, so it, it could be, I'm just doing a campaign, but you're looking at how people are perceiving that on the other side, and for someone that is trying to figure out if they're, where they're whether they're coming or going or what their deal yeah. is, you're giving them a reason to pick up the phone and call you because you've recognized what that solution is for that problem. Well, and I've had, right? I've had other brokers in my area really question that. Like, why are you telling people to move out of Denver? Like, Dem you're supposed to be talking about how Denver's so great. And like, Denver is great. I love it. I grew up there and I'm going to live there forever. Um, but it's more, more traffic-y than it used to be. It's certainly like houses have gotten more expensive. Vacancy is low. Rent is high. And it's not perfect for everyone. So that messaging has really resonated with those See? people who really appreciate it and like say, like, thank you for being honest. Exactly. You're not just the realtor. I love it. Like, Can we get a round of applause for honesty, please? <laughs> um, because, again, that goes back to the difference between marketing and advertising, yeah. right? We can talk about our brands and the fact that we sell real estate all day long. Mm -hmm. But when you are honest and you find those moments to really really be authentic and not pull the wool over people's eyes, yes. you're actually making a statement. Mm -hmm. You're making a stand and you're actually more noticeable that way than if you weren't doing that at all and you were just following along with the crowd and just following along with every single advertising message that's out there, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah, great. All right, so I know we're, we're oh, it's zero. We're at zero. Um, <laughs> so it, this was a, a great conversation. Thank you, everybody. Give them a round of applause. Um, a lot of takeaways. Really quick, though, quick takeaways from today. What's, what's the thing to do around content? Personalization. Personalization. Number one, be organized. Number two, and, and be genuine. Mm -hmm. I think consistency and community-oriented are my two things. Um, that I just feel like if, that's, if one of those things isn't happening, you're going to lose this game. Yep. Yeah, I 100% agree with personalization. That, to me, is a silver bullet right there. And then I'll say, as far as if someone's looking to get into something right now that's trending, voice marketing, podcasting, Alexa, uh, um, Alexa skills, get into that now. Oh, I like that it, idea, it, Alexa skills. It is, is trending. It's the same if you look back at video. That's, that's where you want to be right now. I love it. I love it. Thank you guys so much.